Good morning and welcome to the January Downtown Aviation Economy and Innovation Subcommittee. I'm Daniel Valenzuela, Phoenix City Council Member for District 5 and I'm honored to chair this subcommittee. I'm joined by my colleague from District 4, Vice Mayor Laura Pastor, uh, our colleague from District 7, Michael Nowakowski, and on the phone we have Councilwoman Delta Williams with us. So uh, everyone is, is here for the meeting. Now, we just called the uh, meeting to order. <clears throat> we have a call to the public as the top item. Uh, again, we have a call to the public at the beginning, at the end. And uh, if anyone would like to, to speak on any of these items, they can al always fill out a yellow card for any of them. So it's just a reminder that the public gets the first and the last word when it comes to, to this particular subcommittee. Uh, hearing, but we don't have any cards for this one. <coughs> okay, understood. So we'll go to the minutes. next item, which is the minutes. And this is for December 6th. To accept the minutes, we have a motion. I move approval for December 6th, uh, 2017 minutes. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. We have a few items on the consent agenda. These are items two through six. And uh, we can pull any one of these items or all of these items if my colleagues uh, wish, or uh, we can entertain a motion to accept the consent agen agenda. I move approval. approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passes. <clears throat> For item seven, I'd like to entertain a motion to withdraw this item at uh, staff's request. So moved. We have a, uh, second. Motion and a second. Do you have any discussion? Oh, no, I was just wondering what staff are so I, I know staff is, staff is uh, looking into this item, is working through the item, and uh, after speaking with uh, Mr. Mr. Bennett, uh, we're okay to, to just have this withdrawn. So we, we, we have a we have a motion. Are you okay? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. The item number seven has been withdrawn. We're moving on now to item eight: Valley Parking Services Pilot Program Update. This is item eight, the Valet Parking Services Pilot Program update. Oh, uh, right. Okay, we got to get to item nine. This is for information only, unless we, unless anyone wants a presentation, we can uh, just move forward to item nine. I just have a couple questions on item number eight. Really okay, quick. sure, of course. So according to the report, what I was reading is that we had a net loss of about four hundred twenty thousand dollars, right? Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, to uh, Councilman Nowakowski, uh, that is our estimate. That is correct. Now, is that the terminal four? Is that the surface parking outside of the um, airport? Or is it a combination of both? Uh, Mr. Chairman, to uh, Councilman Nowakowski, that is for Terminal 4. The valet product that we offer is only available for customers that are using Terminal 4. And then the question I have is how many times out of the year is um, Terminal 4 sold out or completely filled where we have to turn cars away? Um, in the, Mr. Chairman, to Councilman Nowakowski, in the past 12 months, I'm not aware of any time where we had to absolutely close it. Sometimes it gets in the 90 percentile, but I'm not aware of any time we've had to close Terminal 4. So basically the, um, the net loss that we're talking about is just potential, we could have sold those potential slots, right? Our parking slots. Uh, How did we come up with the 420,000? Uh, Mr. Chairman to uh, Councilman Nowakowski, uh, that is uh, due to the, uh, the business arrangements that we have with the valet parkers. 
where uh, they get to retain a majority of the fee that the customer pays to park, whereas if they were self-parking in our facilities, we would retain a majority of the fee. So that's the, uh, the, the loss that we anticipate that we've incurred providing the service to the customer. Okay, I, I was just wondering if, if it was adding the, the parking spots that we could have sold that we would have lost. Is <coughs> no, basically sir. the revenue that's collected for those parking lots, spots that are used, right? That, that's correct. All right, thank you. <coughs> that's all the questions. <coughs> thank you. M Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Okay, Councilwoman Williams. Is, is this a pilot program, and what's the length of the term of the agreement? Uh, Mr. Chairman, to uh, Councilwoman uh, Williams, the, uh, it is a pilot program. It was a demonstration program, and uh, one of the uh, uh, challenges that we uh, had in the program was to determine if there was, A, a market for valet parking, and B, to try to come up with a business model that is re revenue neutral to the airport. Uh, we have, it was a two-year valet uh, pilot program, and we have uh, about Eight months, nine months left, uh, about nine months left on the original agreement. So we'll be assessing it at the end of that time and, and be back in front of this committee with a recommendation. Because if it doesn't improve, I don't think we ought to continue it. Mr. Chairman and Councilwoman Williams, uh, we would agree with you. Okay. All right, any other questions, comments? But this is just for information, and uh, hearing no other questions or comments, we'll move on to, to item number nine. This is the Trans Dev Rental Car Center shuttle bus contract, and this was continued from December 6th. <coughs> uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee, uh, once again, I'm joined here today by Steve Grubbs, our Deputy Aviation Director for Operations and by Kimberly Brown, who's our ground transportation uh, manager. Uh, <clears throat> as, you, as you noted, Mr. Chairman, uh, this was, uh, we did make a presentation on this item at your meeting last month, and uh, you requested that we uh, bring, bring it back for further discussion uh, today. Uh, we are requesting authorization to enter into uh, negotiations with TransDev to extend our rental car shuttle bus contract. The, uh, just very quick, quickly, the current contract will be expiring on December the 31st of this year, and uh, the original uh, contract started in January of 2009. Uh, TransDev provides the day-to-day -day operation maintenance of our shuttle bus fleet, transporting our customers between the terminals and the rental car center, and in 2017, uh, they transported almost 6.6 .6 million customers back and forth between the terminals uh, and the uh, rental car center. Uh, they also provide some other services uh, for us in terms of ambassadors uh, on the curbs and in the rental car center for the customers, and also provide emergency response to us if we have a need for uh, other shuttle bus services. And they maintain our fleet of uh, about 108 uh, buses at the airport. So uh, what we are requesting, just to remind the committee, we are requesting to uh, authorization to enter into negotiations with them on a, an extension of the contract through the completion of SkyTrain. As, as the committee is aware, we are uh, finalizing uh, the SkyTrain. Uh, we anticipate that this would be about a three and a half year extension. And we think that uh, by doing a current contract extension, it uh, would maintain continuity through the service, would help us minimize risk uh, and cost associated with uh, trying to bring a new operator into the environment, and also help us with the transition services as we phase out uh, a majority of the shuttle bus uh, services upon the completion of SkyTrain. So uh, with your concurrence, uh, we would recommend that you uh, uh, recommend to the City Council that uh, we're authorized to enter into negotiations with TransDev on this extension. We're happy to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments from my colleagues? I'd like to make a motion. Okay, great. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to approve staff's recommendation. Second. All right, great. We have a motion and a second. Any? We don't have any cards, correct? I have, I have a comment. Just, sure, please. I just want to thank Mr. Bennett for um, 
I had some questions, and that's why I actually asked to continue it. Uh, we met. You answered them all. Thank you so much. And also to um, TransDev for thank you for all the, what you do for our community, all the outreach to the nonprofits, and especially the cleanups around that area. So I want to thank them also for being a good partner to the airport. That's it. All right. That's great. Uh, this, this item was continued on the 6th. It's good to hear that all the questions were answered. and. It's good to know that, that uh, this is going to continue. This is, this is needed to continue moving the uh, airport forward as, uh, as we work on sky trading and everything else. So uh, motion and a second. Any other discussion or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Moving on now to, <clears throat> excuse me. And this is item 10. West Ground Transportation Center request for qualifications and request for proposal. Uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the subcommittee, thank you for the opportunity to discuss our recommendation uh, for the development of a Western Ground Transportation <coughs> Center at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. I'm uh, joined here today by Jay DeWitt, our Deputy Aviation Director for Finance, and Larry Belinsky, our Financial Advisor from Frasca and Associates. As represented on this slide, the current parking environment at Sky Harbor is weighted to the east side of the airport and serves the residents of the East Valley cities with very convenient parking. In addition to the 9,500 parking spaces that are on the east side of the airport, there are also approximately 8,000 uh, spaces provided by off-airport operators in the east side locations along 40, 4th Street Corridor and State Route 143. However, on the west side of the airport, we only have approximately 3,700 spaces available to our West Valley customers. As we move forward with the development of SkyTrain, the completion of the Terminal 3 project and demolition of Terminal 2, the approximate 3,700 spaces on the west side of the airport will be taken out of service. The result will mean that there are very few airport parking opportunities for the residents of Phoenix who access Sky Harbor from the west. We feel the need to replace those 3,700 spaces that uh, would be necessary and part of a Western Ground Transportation Center that we would like to provide much better level of service to the residents of Phoenix who access the airport from State Route, 150, uh, State Route 51, Interstate 17, Interstate 10, and Buckeye Road. We believe the Western Ground Transportation has many benefits. It has very convenient freeway access, uh, it has a Phoenix, it will have a Phoenix SkyTrain connection. It will replace the Terminal 2 and West Economy parking lots. It will help us alleviate some of the drive-through traffic that currently occurs as West Valley residents trans drive through the airport to park on the east to take the SkyTrain back to the terminals. And lastly, it does provide some intermodal opportunities on the west side of the airport. As a reminder, uh, we went through a request for information process last spring to determine how the development community viewed the concept of a West Ground Transportation Center. We received six responses and conducted in-depth discussions with the respondents throughout the summer. summer. We learned from these uh, RFI responses and the interviews conducted that the development community feels strongly that there is a need for Western Ground Transportation Center development. We also learned that the development community is interested in exploring opportunities where they would build a new Western Ground Transportation Center and they would also assume responsibility for the operations of all of our public parking facilities under a long-term concession agreement. Now, based upon the evaluation of the information we received uh, we feel that there are three options for the city to potentially consider. 
One, option one, would be for aviation to invest directly in a new western parking garage in the range of 150 to 200 million dollars. Uh, we think this would be challenging for us as we uh, lack some uh, uh, bonding capabilities with all of the additional projects that we have underway. And also, it, it maintains uh, the city in, uh, with market exposure as we operate public parking facilities. Option two would be for aviation to consider a long-term master development parking concession whereby a developer would build a new West Ground Transportation Center and operate all other parking facilities under a long-term concession agreement. We think this could be a 30-year, uh, somewhere along a 30-year term. It does mitigate some of the risk of uh, the city continue to be in the parking business. There's an opportunity for the city to be compensated uh, with the payment up front, as well as get ongoing annual service payments by whoever the concessionaire might be. And at the end of the term, all of the parking assets, both the existing and the new garage, would revert back to the city. And then lastly, option three would be to do nothing uh, at the West Ground Transportation Center station and continue to, to direct all of the parking to our east side facilities. We think this uh, would decrease our revenue uh, for airport operations as we would, as I previously mentioned, we will have some spaces coming out of our inventory and it would just further exacerbate the disparity between the east and the west side parking options. So based upon our analysis of these options, what we would recommend to the uh, subcommittee is that uh, we uh, be given authorization to issue a request for qualifications and proposals to pursue option number two, which would be a comprehensive development agreement to develop a new west side economy parking facility as well as a long-term airport parking concession agreement. And Mr. DeWitt and Mr. Belinsky and I are available to answer questions that the committee may have. Okay. Councilman Nagoski. Um, Mr. Bennett, it wasn't just once, but about a dozen times I've asked you to look into some retail in a hotel. Uh, if we're going to have a, a light rail stop right there on 24th Street and where the SkyTrain is, that it needs to be more than just a parking lot, that we should look at other options. Um, I even asked last um, meeting, and it was quoted on page 38 of the, um, of the minutes, about the hotel also. So I'm not sure why you all keep on coming with just a parking lot and we're not talking about other things. I mean, we have an opportunity to think outside the box to build something that looks not like a, an ugly parking garage, but something that has a combination of retail, hotel, and it looks like an innovative way of parking cars that it's not just an ugly parking garage. I'd really like to see you all come back with something that looks more like retail, hotel, with the combination of parking where the people that are going to the park, um, that are going to park the cars there, can stop at a Starbucks, pick up a sandwich. Even our employees on their way <laughs> to work, they, they could actually pick up something and, and maybe if they forgot their lunch, that there's a place for them there and it's not just a parking garage. So if we're gonna make an investment or look for a partnership for an investment of 150 to $200 million, that it should be something that has that wow effect. Um, that area has been hurting for many years. We've wiped out uh, four Mexican um, neighborhoods and I believe it's a great opportunity for us to beautify that area and also to provide some quality jobs and and have people be feel pride of uh, proud of um, of what we have um, built in, in that area. So I'd really like to, I I think we need this. But I like to see something grander, or something where it includes a hotel, retail, and all that. If there's going to be a stop there, um, I think we need to make sure that there's a that we maximize that <coughs> that SkyTrain stop. Vice Mayor. So I'm going to piggyback off that comment um, because uh, one that has been uh, really wanting to understand why we're building an additional parking lot now with the 
ability of this uh, presentation of demonstrating that we're eliminating or we're taking away, uh, I want to say 1,300 spaces or something like 3,700, uh, understand the need uh, for the parking uh, garage. Uh, I also wanted to know um, kind of what the cost benefit analysis is. And with the cost benefit analysis, what is the difference in costs and what is it that the city is gaining um, in the long run uh, by uh, moving to a private uh, entity or, or leasing out the property? I understand the risk and responsibilities. However, we've always had the risk and responsibilities and we have been doing fine. Um, but I think this goes to the comment that uh, Councilman Nowakowski is speaking of. There is, in my understanding, I haven't seen it, but there is a bigger picture as to what to do to that west side. Uh, there I've heard conversations about it, uh, but I don't think it's been uh, formulated. I know conversations have been had with the private industry as to what it's going to look like. Um, but as a council, uh, I believe as a council, we are the ones that uh, really probably should lead on what we want to see on that west side and then uh, determine how we want to build that. Uh, but that's just a given, I think that's a push-pull me between council and uh, staff uh, as, as how we operate. Um, and so that's probably a bigger dialogue we probably have to have as a council, um, uh, in particular what we want to see for that west side. The other caution I have is um, uh, I just don't want to be in the situation in the future where we are with the Sher that we were with the Sheraton Hotel. So how would that how would that be, piece be structured and how what that what would that look like? And I think that's a bigger um, dialogue or philosophical dialogue that we have as a council. Uh, so um, I'm not sure. I know that conversation has been had and, and, and to build uh, businesses and economic development and that be one of the engines, but I haven't seen any analysis or documentation as to <coughs> what is it that we want or maybe it's more we have to direct as to uh, what we want to see and, and then us be able to direct. So I'm, I'm kind of stuck right now in, in, in the middle of this piece. <clears throat> I understand the, the parking. Okay. Uh, 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 Councilman Williams? Uh, I, I have a couple questions for Jim, if I may. Of course. Uh, to me, this is two issues, I guess, because I come from the west side to park, and I don't want us to have to go out and spend another $150 million. I think that to, to do this deal uh, would be good for Sky Harbor and for all the people that come from the west side. To me, the hotel is a separate issue, and what I'd like to see staff do is identify an area in addition to this parking that would be viable for a hotel project. I think most major airports have a hotel that uh, people get off the plane, have conferences, can stay, eat, and jump back on a plane and gone about their business. So I would like to see us, one, go ahead and approve this request and then request, secondly, that staff do an analysis and bring back the potential uh, site and what it would take uh, to get a private entity to build a hotel. And I, I guess I'm asking Jim if that's possible. Uh, Mr. Chairman, to uh, Councilwoman Williams, uh, that is possible. And, and if I may, Mr. Chairman, I would like to just uh, uh, try to answer a couple of the questions. Uh, first, uh, you know, Councilman Nowakowski's questions about the hotel. Uh, we, we agree with you. And uh, when we did the RFI uh, back uh, in the spring of last year, our initial uh, RFI was to seek from the development community their input into exactly, as you say, the development of not only the parking component, but also 
uh, opportunity for an on-airport hotel, commercial development, perhaps even some retail. And we received some mixed messages back from the development community on that retail, hotel, commercial aspect of that. And actually, uh, their advice was that uh, what we do is two-step this, that we proceed with the uh, parking aspect of it, and then uh, come at a later date, and I put this slide back up here, uh, slide number four, to show you that uh, then come back at a later time with uh, some kind of a development agreement for that uh, area, which is uh, the five acre site, uh, which is right at the corner of 24th Street and Buckeye Road. And develop the parking, which is on the south side of that station, firstly, and then at a later time come back uh, with a development, an RFP for a development agreement for the commercial, retail, and hotel. In terms of the cost benefits of these, uh, I'll uh, turn to Mr. DeWitt and or Mr. Belinsky to offer some uh, some uh, information on those items. Thank you. Um, you know, as it relates to the cost benefit to the parking, you know, Vice Mayor, I, you are correct that you have assumed the risk over these years, and parking has done generally well. I will say that. The landscape is changing as it relates to parking at airports, um, and the risk related to that is, is also changing. The combination of TNCs, the Ubers, Lyfts, have had impacts on, on parking, as well as the future of autonomous vehicles. Okay, and while we are, you know, autonomous vehicles are not in the next three to five or maybe 10 years away, they are going to come at some point and impact revenues. I think the, as we looked at the, the option that Mr. Bennett has put forth, it achieves a balance of transferring that risk while still maintaining a level of revenue on an annual basis and an upfront payment that makes sense given the value of the parking concession. And I think it goes without saying that the airport would not enter into a deal with respect to a parking concession unless it was neutral to better than what the airport is achieving today. Okay. So looking at the map, you have eight acres for parking, five acres for parking, and then you have the offices for the airport. There's nothing there talking about future economic um, retail, <coughs> a hotel. My concern is this, is that if we're building a SkyTrain, and we're going to have one stop along the airport to the um, to the rental car. That that one stop has to have all these things that we're talking about. This is the first time I've ever heard about the RFI and the results of that. I think um, we, as council members, especially sitting on the subcommittee, we should have gotten the full report of what the private sector is talking about and what type of partnerships we can have. Um, and now bringing up the whole Lyft and Uber and all that, we're allocating more parking and we're not looking at any other options. So I don't see an option there of what we're talking about here. So my thing is, my, my concern is until we see something in writing or until we see something on a map saying potential future something that we're, we're discussing here, um, it's not gonna happen. I think it's been I've been talking about for the last three years, and that was even before you became the um, director of the airport. So my, my thing is, if we're gonna have one stop, that this one stop better fit all. I don't wanna have parking, parking, where people are gonna have to walk through a parking garage to get to this retail, because then it's gonna fail. Or even if we're gonna have an airport that a private sector builds, that they're gonna have to walk through a parking um, structure to get to the light rail. So I want to make sure if we're going to do something that we do it right and we look four, five, ten years down the line to see what this stop could look like and the potential that we can have as the city of Phoenix of generating more tax revenues besides parking and seeing how parking might not even be an issue in the next ten years. So you brought up a good point because I sit on another committee that we where MAG was presented and MAG uh, uh, indicated that in the next 10 years, 
uh, autonomous vehicles are going to come into play. Um, and I've been one kind of like pushing back and saying, why do we need more parking when we know that we have more Uber and Lyft uh, uh, happening? Um, I understand we're getting rid of 3,200 spaces. Um, I don't think we need to build 3,200 uh, spaces uh, if we're, we're looking towards the future. Uh, what also was discussed in the, in the committee was that they are now, uh, the industry is now looking at that par the parking structures and making sure that they build it so that if there is no longer any need for parking, what could they do with that uh, infrastructure? And what then could they shift it to or turn it into uh, at that timing and moment? Um, so I do believe that the industry is moving and is changing. I also know that we're still in a major transition of uh, to now and future uh, because I'm probably not one that will give up my car and uh, unless it's really an autonomous vehicle. Um, but I don't know if I would be able to afford that at, during that time as they roll out. Um, so it's kind of, we're in a kind of interesting situation right now as we're looking, as we're building towards the future. And so I think that's probably some of the conversation why we're, we're, we're having at this moment. Uh, because do we really need uh, parking? Will we really get this revenue? I know even though that the private industry will assume the risk and responsibility, that doesn't mean that uh, in assuming the risk and responsibility, it's going to be profitable. Um, so what does that then look like uh, for us? And so those are the kind of risks that uh, I guess we're taking um, versus uh, us operating and us adjusting to whatever the needs are within that, uh, within that timing and time frame where we can then adjust where we need to quickly. So uh, those are just some of the thoughts. I think those, Vice Mayor, those thoughts are, are right on point. We have a number of clients that as they look to build new parking are altering the way they are constructing their parking lots. So there are no sloped ramps within the parking structure. So that, and also the height levels between the floor and ceiling are being increased. So that in the event that the building can no longer be used for parking, it can be converted to an office building, retail space, things along those lines. Um, that comes at a cost, but I think, and as we look at our other clients, that is a cost that they are willing to assume given the future. Um, to the second point, you know, we could debate if autonomous cars are gonna be here 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I will say though that I think the timing with respect to what the airport is looking to do now is the right time because in the RFI discussions we had, the general thought was that autonomous cars would really not have a significant impact on parking for until about year 25 to 30. So you still have, if you were to do this deal now, an opportunity of 25 years of that private entity operating the parking to get a return um, on their investment. With, re with respect to what that concession um, would be. So I think it's the longer we were to wait, the less the window of opportunity there is and the risk becomes even greater for the private sector. So the timing now is, is the time to move with respect to that regard. Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Councilwoman, Councilwoman Williams. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think uh, the vice mayor said made some very valid points, but I also think she made the case on why it would be good that the city does not take the risk that uh, it become a private entity, uh, much like the ball field, where then instead of going to them, it would come back to the city. I am not willing to give up my car, and I think a lot of people aren't. But I will tell you, being from the west side, it's kind of aggravating that there's little parking on the west side, and I think uh, 
it's important that uh, we save our money, airport money, for what will bring us the greatest benefits. And in this case, I think having a partnership, a public-private partnership, probably is a good deal for the Sky Harbor and the city. And I don't see as we have anything to lose. I think we have everything to gain. So I support staff's uh, position. Okay. We do have one card. So let's go to that one card. Mr. Brent Kleiman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I, I think a lot of the points I'd wanted to speak about once I really listened to what's going on with this, you guys have brought up. A couple questions that I have is losing the 3,700 spaces, it, how many times during the year is a parking at 100% capacity? I mean, how needed are those spaces, first of all? Two, do we need to add almost 2,000 spaces in addition to the 3,700 we're losing? Because this says approximately 5,500. So we're not just replacing lost spaces, we're growing more spaces with Uber, Lyft, taxis, light rail, which we're connecting easier to the airport, which is going to grow. So we're saying less people may drive to the airport, but we need 2,000 more spaces than we currently have. And I'm not sure how full the lots get currently. And I like very much so Councilman Nowakowski's idea of adding retail, hotel, some sort of lodging, even commercial businesses into this. Because if you don't start with it and you do it a phase two, phase two probably isn't going to happen with this. That, that's not where it's going to go. I think it needs to start. And if you want to add a thousand spaces, and I understand we're taking down terminal two and part of the West economy lot, but w again, with the addition of the light rail, the train station, Uber, Lyft, is it more cost effective to the city to possibly keep the terminal two parking open and not build a brand new parking structure only? I mean, if we're going to add retail, commercial, um, lodging of some sort in there, then there makes sense to build the parking structure as well. But a standalone parking structure, most airports, I think you drive in, if you have to drive through the airport to park, you do it. It's not that inconvenient to come in from the west side. I live west of the airport. I drive through to the east economy lot. Is it fun? No. But do I, do, do I not travel because of it? No, it doesn't stop me from traveling. So thank you all very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, so uh, any, oh, Mr. Bennett. Mr. Chairman and, <clears throat> and members of the uh, subcommittee, thank you for the, for the input. I mean, this is, this is terrific. <clears throat> uh, as I mentioned, uh, we, uh, when we initially uh, did the RFI uh, a year ago, it was the concept that uh, Councilman Nowakowski uh, has been talking about as well as the vice mayor. And uh, we we debated uh, quite uh, quite a bit internally as to do we try to two step it or do we lump it together. We started having it all put together, and then said uh, based on some of the feedback from the development community that we would carve out that larger parcel and do that first as parking, and then preserve the smaller parcel for the development that you're speaking about. If it's the desire of the subcommittee we can put that back in this package because that's, that's, that's how we had started uh, based on uh, a year or so ago. We were happy to put that back in and do a comprehensive uh, RFQ, RFP, and if that's the desire of the council or if you would rather us come back uh, at a later date and have further conversations, uh, we can do that also. Uh, we do feel that uh, we would like to get some direction uh, fairly soon as SkyTrain is going to be, it is, it is moving into construction <clears throat> and we would like to be able to time this development so that when SkyTrain opens, we have the services for the uh, residents of Phoenix that live west of the airport. But uh, I, you know, ask you if you would like for us to include the comprehensive as part of this RFQ, RFP process. We are ready, uh, as we sit here today, to add it to that process and, uh, and move ahead. Or if you would rather us come back at a later date for further conversations, we're happy to do that also. 
Vice Mayor? I would just like, I would like to know personally um, in making some critical decision what the plan is period for that whole area. And it's obviously there, there's conversations or some type of plan been going on. I don't know what the plan is for all that west side area. Um, so for me, it's very, um, it's hard for me not to know the bigger picture. And it's hard for me to vote on an item when I don't know a bigger picture and what the pieces are or, or elements are that then we vote on this and then we, the bigger picture is now then we're gonna move to this. I just need, I just need clarity on what that whole area is gonna be. I'm hearing two things. I'm hearing we can come back and uh, add that piece or add that piece in today, but I just need to understand what the bigger picture of that west side is in order to move forward. Um, I guess my question is, why do we need 5,200 parking spots? Where, where, where are the numbers showing or indicating that we need that? Uh, Mr. Chairman to uh, Vice Mayor uh, Pastor, the uh, if 50, if what we're showing here is 55. Or 55, yeah. Uh, some of this was based on feedback that we received from the development community. And also, we will be uh, removing about 3,700 spaces from our inventory with those projects that I previously mentioned. And then we need to uh, prepare for accommodating for future growth uh, at the airport. Uh, the council may recall, uh, you know, the history of Sky Harbor. It started on the west side at Terminal 1, and then Terminal 1 got full, and Terminal 2 was built, and then Terminal 2 was built, and Terminal or Terminal 2 got full, and Terminal 3 was built, and so we kept marching east. Now Terminal 4 is full, Terminal 3 will be full when it's remodeled, and now we're moving back to the west. So it's important in, in terms of the evolution of the airport that we have some capacity for future growth on the west side. So that's where the additional 1,200 or so spaces would come from, 2,000 spaces. Okay. And what I'm hearing is this is what the industry or the business is telling us. And does that mean the industry is telling us because this is what needs to pencil in? in order to generate revenue for themselves. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, to Vice Mayor Pastor, the, ultimately, if we go through this process, then the respondents will model exactly the size of the garages that, that would be constructed. Our anticipation, based on what feedback we received, is it's around the 5,500 spaces. They may come back with a phased incremental uh, development plan where they build half of it on day one or 3,000 spaces on day one and then move to, to the rest of it. We don't know until we go through that process. I would just add, um, Vice Mayor, that that the private sector is going to do their own demand study to right size that West parking development. And as Mr. Bennett had said, if the initial indication is is that 2,500 spots is the right number with the ability to augment that in the future, then that is probably what they will build to. If the right answer is 5,500 spots based on the demand study that they have conducted, then they will probably design and build to, to that number. So I think it's, it, it really is a, a way to allow the market forces to kind of dictate what the right number of spots should be there. And I think the ability to still maintain the five acre site provides for that secondary development that, that it sounds like you are, you are asking for, whether it that be a hotel or hotel with some retail development, um, which logically makes the most sense. And again, was borne out during the discussions of, of the RFI. Again, the private sector will have to will conduct their own demand study to figure out what is the right size and right level of hotel service to provide there to to monetize it so that it that it, it, it at a minimum breaks even from their perspective to make money. Councilman, uh, I. 
if there's not a rush on building the um, parking garage, I'd like to see a whole master plan. I've heard from um, from developers and individuals how excited they are to actually create something in this in this location. So I, I think the excitement's out there. I think the willingness is out there. I think if we're going to have a light rail stop right there at that location, that we need to maximize that location. And if you come back with a plan on how we can maximize that, where we have our, our, our offices there, we have parking there, and we have other stuff, whatever that other is. And also, if you can maybe touch, I know we were working with the whole Sacred Heart community and CPLC on regarding that whole Sacred Heart property, and they had some concerns, so maybe even hooking up with that, those groups of individuals and making sure we have some input on what they like to see, maybe the design or what the look of it, so it's a win-win for the community and, and for us as a city. <coughs> I yes. have one question, uh, Mr. Bennett. Um, in doing this holistic uh, piece on the west side, when do you need a decision regarding um, the parking or the transportation center, west ground transportation center? Do we go ahead, Mr. Chairman to Vice Mayor Pastor? Uh, soon, <laughs> if that's a technical term, but uh, well, we, soon to <clears throat> you will we, be for yeah, soon to yeah, me could we, be we, six months. We, so. def we definitely uh, <laughs> would need a uh, some kind of guidance within the next couple of months. Okay. Uh, so. and because if not, then when we finish SkyTrain Stage 2, there will not be any services available at the Western Grand Transportation Station. So um, we anticipate maybe next month kind of having a uh, holistic picture. Could we, that be possible? Yeah, so then absolutely. we at least have a concept or a plan. Uh, it may not be fully developed, but we have where we're going so that then um we know that then we need to move i don't i, I just need guidance from you <laughs> so is that is that doable under with yeah. the understanding that it's not going to it's going to be a concept it's it's not you're right it's it's uh it's not going to be incredibly detailed i would imagine to pull it all together but but yeah that right conceptually is it possible to to bring something back uh, next month so that we can we can have that discussion because I mean I I do respect our subject matter experts opinions on the fact that we need something soon we have to figure that out as well but so uh, so what are your thoughts on that mr. Bennett uh, mr. chairman uh, yes uh, we can bring back uh, and share with you uh, some of the concepts that we received as part of the RFI process and when we did the RFI process we just went out with these the blank squares that you see on your screen and said, private sector, tell us what you think might work in this location. And we received some feedback. We can consolidate that and uh, come back to you and say, this is what the development community told us. And uh, we are adopting the approach that for this to work, we need to not be too prescriptive we need to let the development community tell us what they think works best Absolutely. we'll give them the concepts or the ideas but then let them uh, as mr. Belinsky said kind of right-size that and uh, make proposals to us in detail okay okay does that require a motion I guess to continue to next month with uh, with with the direction that was discussed <laughs> Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to continue this item uh, for next month. Second. With, with, with the added. The, with the additional information. With all the additional information. The conceptual plan of the whole West sure. Side. The, it's clear it's as. Here? Yeah. Uh, yes, Councilwoman Williams. I, I have some kind of mixed emotions whether I'm supporting the motion or not because I think we need to recognize that one. The west side is underserved today, and the development is going to occur on the west side. You've got the new freeways. You're going to have more people coming in. You've got Bill Gates' little purchase out by Buckeye. Uh, 
the traffic is going to grow heavily. And I really believe that we need to get this matter resolved. However, I like the idea of a conceptual map, but recognizing the fact it is purely conceptual. Because if I were the hotel person, uh, developer, I would want to know that, one, the parking is going to occur, two, it's going to be used, and that I'm going to have the traffic necessary uh, to utilize my hotel. Because I don't want the city put in a position like we were with the Sheridan. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a tricky situation, and it it's all involves timing. And as long as we're going to bring it back next month and make a decision, I would support the motion. But if we're going to wallow this around for six months, then I'm not prepared. So I guess, could you clarify, you, we're going to bring it back next month and make a decision? Well, um, Mr. Bennett said he needed it soon. So I think with the conceptual plan of the whole West Side, it'll put many members at ease and uh, we'll be able to vote for it next month. In that case, I'll support the motion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, uh, for that clarity as well, Councilwoman <laughs> Williams. All right, we have a motion and a second. We already have, we had our speaker. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. passes, thank you. The final item on this agenda is the FAA flight path update, which is something that we've had on this agenda for a year. three years now, standing, standing item. Three years now. Yeah, it's been a I while. It. Three years now, right. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Bennett. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the subcommittee. Uh, joined uh, uh, this morning by uh, Deborah Ostriker, our Assistant Aviation Director, and then Jordan Fell, Deputy Aviation Director for Planning and Environmental. And uh, Jordan will walk you through the uh, presentation this morning. Uh, it is refreshing to be able to sit in front of this committee and to be able to outline progress being made. And uh, we'll do this brief presentation and then uh, be available to answer questions that the subcommittee might have. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Mr. Chairman, members of the subcommittee, by way of quick background, you'll recall in September of 18, 2014, the FAA implemented new RNAV flight procedures at Sky Harbor uh, without following the National Environmental, uh, Environmental Policy Act. Uh, the following summer, 2015, both the city and neighborhood petitioners filed suit against the FAA, and approximately two years later, the U.S. Court of Appeals ruled in the city's favor. Uh, following that ruling, the neighborhood uh, petitioners, the FAA's attorneys and city's attorneys met to discuss how to implement the court's order, and on November 30th, all parties filed a joint petition with the court. The joint petition lays out two key steps. In step one, the FAA will return the West departures to their original corridors approximately. Uh, they will do a variety of operational and environmental analyses leading up to that implementation on April 1st. And prior to April 1st, the FAA will hold three community meetings to discuss uh, the, the plan to go back to the old departure corridors, as well as ask the community for feedback on any airspace concerns they might have since the 2014 flight path changes. Those changes would be addressed in step two, as the joint petition refers to. The community outreach will include three open houses where the FAA will facilitate a variety of information stations, uh, including how the routes will be uh, returned. The meetings are, you can see here, scheduled for February 6th, 7th, and 8th, Maryville High School, Cesar Chavez High School, and Horizon High School in the Northeast, uh, respectively. You can also see the FAA's project website for this where they will post community information as well as uh, information related uh, that the community will see at those meetings. And, and very importantly, the project website will also have a public comment form so that members of the community that can't attend one of the three open houses uh, during the public comment period from February 1st to the 16th, they can get online and, and make any comment they wish to regarding airspace concerns they have. So with that, staff is happy to answer any questions or, or take any follow-on items. Okay. We do have one card. Mr. Brent Kleiman. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, I'm smiling year to year with the 
idea that public comments are opening and meetings are scheduled. I'm very concerned about the locations of the meetings and sad to see there's not one down in the historic districts or near downtown central Phoenix, really. Um, I, I just, I, I want to make sure that we are doing better as far as communicating what's happening with these meetings, the purpose of the meetings, because you may update the website later today, but the page as of this morning doesn't give any information about what these meetings are, what the purpose of the meetings are, what topics are going to be covered in the meeting. Any, There's no details in this, and I understand it's a couple weeks away still, but I think we have to err on the side of over-informing. We, we can't just have one sentence on there that says we've got community outreach meetings. We need to explain who's leading the meetings, what's happening in these meetings. Do you need to be at the meeting from 5 to 8 p.m. or is it an open house? Are they repetitive, different? You know, there's there's got to be more given because the residents are now at a point where they see the finish line. We want to make sure we're helping push in the right direction to get to the results we want to get to. And I just don't think you're setting us up to succeed with that right now with the information you're giving. So please go overboard. There's not too much you can give to the residents to get them ready for this. Thank you. I appreciate that. Vice Mayor. So uh, Councilman Valenzuela, um, I think it, if it wasn't for the residents uh, and joining with the city in the lawsuit, uh, we wouldn't be here today. And what was adamant from the very beginning was, from the very beginning uh, was lack of resident participation. <laughs> and then it was residents participated, but FAA wasn't participating. And then we went to the lawsuit, and the demand in the lawsuit was that FAA would participate in community meetings. And so we're now to this point where, um, where there is a point in time where we need to get it right. And getting it right means uh, working with the residents, uh, working with all the different type of residents that, that are affected by this, but also communication is key. And communication, uh, one of the things that we figured out through this whole process was there was a lack of communication. And in the lack of communication, then there's a lack of transparency. Lack of transparency is a lack of trust. And I don't believe that the city of Phoenix was ever one of those that did not want to be painted or perceived that way. Uh, who ended up with who the big bad giant was FAA. But now we're at this point where we need to demonstrate that we are uh, including the community or voicing, hearing the voices of the community and designing the way we're going to roll this out. Um, how are these locations determined? Thank you, Mr. Chair, to Vice Mayor Pastor. Um, first of all, I have to say on our behalf uh, that thanks to the leadership of you and the council and the neighbors, Mr. <coughs> Kleinman and the neighbors, we are at this point today because we would not be here without that. And uh, communication is key. And these three meetings that uh, with your urging us to urge the FAA to absolutely have at least three meetings that they have agreed to have and again with your urging to get that information posted which they did before they are ready to announce the location so uh, they assure us that by Friday they will have more information to your point to Mr. Kleiman's point of where they are exactly what time what is expected all of that information so that should be by the end of the week. As far as how the uh, locations were determined, uh, we made some recommendations to the FAA, but again, ultimately, these are the FAA's meetings that they are having, and they have chosen to put them in the locations that are going to be or have expressed the most concern about the future impacts. And so, 
as the flight paths go back to almost exactly the way that they were before. There are neighborhoods to the west that are going to be impacted again. There are also some serious concerns in the North Valley, and so that is why the Horizon High School has been chosen. Uh, as far as whether or not there should be a meeting in the historic neighborhoods, we can certainly go back to the FAA and ask them to have a fourth meeting in the historic neighborhoods. Uh, the, the winners, so to speak, in this, in this lawsuit, but their three meetings are chosen by the locations that are going back to the old flight paths as well as the concerned area in the North Valley. Um. <laughs> May I suggest that you go back to FAA and uh, the fourth meeting should be with the historic districts and the downtown area. Um, they're the ones who fought for this. They're the ones who got it to where they are today. And they're the ones who requested these three meetings. So for them not to be a part of it or even in a central city area, um, is kind of disturbing, but, um, and I understand that it's FAA, however, we have a lot of influence on what FAA, FAA is looking to us to guide them. So yes. those are just my comments. Yes, Vice Mayor, absolutely. And we will make sure that the FAA makes clear that everybody is welcome at every meeting, despite the location, but we will urge them again to add a fourth meeting into the historic neighborhood area. Mr. Chair? Because I notice it's not, Sorry, uh, Councilman. I also notice it's not Central City. We're Central City, it's Grant Park, and those uh, little areas that are also going to get affected by it. And I notice that they're not, it's not a Central City um, meeting. Because they're going to go back to, if they're going back, those, the Central City is going to be affected by it. Um, would you like me to take that, Jordan? Actually, um, Mr. Chair, to Vice Mayor Pastor, that area in particular, there is not a significant change. Oh, perfect. And so that is probably why they've gone to the areas of significant change or okay. potential change. Okay. So, so requesting a fourth meeting would, is invaluable for that uh, historic neighborhood. Mr. Chair, we'll absolutely Mayor, request that the FAA conduct a fourth meeting Thank in the historic neighborhood. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Councilman Alkowski, do you have a question or a comment? The vice chair covered it. I was going to ask about uh, Marcos Nisa and Grant Park, but oh. that question answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We, we, we all, we have Councilman Alkowski and Councilman Williams on the phone for the, uh, for the end of this meeting also. Uh, we don't have any cards. Any other questions or comments by my colleagues? Okay, hearing none, I want to thank you for your help on this to Mr. Bennett and Ms. Uh, and, and Ms. Well, the entire team. Debo has been working hard on this. All right, so we have uh, an, another call to the public. We have nothing. Uh, future agenda items. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.